right after I published my easy French video, someone asked me if I could do ombre. I created these with my new acrylic collection. Let me show you how I did them. Let's get started. This is super exciting for me because generally products, professional products are hard to get, but I am releasing this to everybody. So at a time like this, you guys can do these at home. Ombre is one of those designs that is hard to do, but this is gonna help us do it a little bit easier. Along with my new product, I have a worksheet. You can just download it, nailcareer.com, and you can work on that to help create those beads before you take it to your hand, okay? But I'm gonna take it to the hand today so you can see exactly what that looks like when it goes onto a hand. I'm using a little dish here, so it's really easy for you to see when I put my brush in the monomer. Now here's the monomer. This is my new kit, Clean Acrylic, and it's no smell. I've tested this on the strongest nose in the house, which is Cameraman. <laughs> and yeah. you can't smell it, can you? No, no, it's great. It's pretty good. Uh, yeah. Okay, so you don't need much because it evaporates slow, it, so it cures slow, which gives you time to practice that bead liquid and powder. So important, as I've been saying for many years. So all you're gonna do is put a little bit, I'm just doing one nail today, but I mean just a little bit, okay? Just a little tiny bloop, that's probably too much. So if you just look at the cap here, you could probably just cover the bottom of that cap maybe, and then dump it in there, for, especially for one nail. If you're doing a whole hand, maybe just a half a cap. And you don't wanna pour it back in. You don't want any traces of powder in there to contaminate that. Okay, so I've got me brush, and I'm going to use, let me see now, this is my clear cap. And this is going to be me white. And I'm going to use the foundation pink. Now, I have two pinks of Susie's pink tint. This is a little bit more see-through. And you always want a more opaque. Now, I'm calling it foundation because I sort of, I've been doing this for years, relating it to using foundation on the skin to sort of smooth it out and make it so you can't see all the maybe redness and stuff like that. That's what I have. <laughs> so it's a nice opacity to cover over top of the white. This will make it easier. You can do it with this, but your skills have to be pretty sharp in order to do it with a more see-through-ish pink. So I do recommend a more opaque. Another thing you need are professional files. Those can be hard to find too. But I've got a nice little set of professional files that I have, and I'm going to use probably the medium one, and I'm gonna buff that natural nail. I'm gonna need my glasses. Okay, so that's how I'm gonna prepare the nail, is I'm just going to slightly buff up the nail. You just wanna gently, and you see this round corner? That is meant to get in there a little bit like that. That's just to help you get in there. Now when I release this kit, it is focusing on developing your skills for the liquid and powder, which like I say, is the most important thing. Once you get that down, you can start working on people. Once you get the liquid and powder mastered, or even just, you know, you're halfway there, you can start working on yourself and it makes it so much easier for not having to file it all off if it goes everywhere. That's why you want to learn it first. Once you do that, you can do any type of nail. Okay, so I've got that. So when I release the kit, I've got four colors and the monomer. I am working now on a prep and prime. So when you go to putting it on yourself, those will be available soon. Okay, this is just a sample bottle, just working on the packaging. Now I've already cleansed the nail, but when you put the primer on, don't hit the skin and don't oversaturate the nail. Now I've done the other fingers so you can see when they're all done, you can see it all together. Rather than walk you through every single finger, I wanted to really focus this video on the application of the product. This one is a bit of a tough one. Practice this one and don't be hard on yourself because this one, ombre, is tough. It's trying to get that gentle fade between the two products can be hard. And some days you'll be on it and some days you won't be. And even if you master it Monday, you might be excited to try it again Tuesday and it just might not be working for you. That is art, so don't be hard on yourself. That does happen. It happens with artists all the time and that's what nail technicians are artists. So I'm just applying a form. Got a few videos on that. 
There is an art to that. This is such an important step, you guys. This is like, if you could do a beautiful application and great product control and all that, and it just might not look right if you don't get the form right. So there is an art to that as well. Honestly, every step of this is an art. Okay, now I've been using this brush for a while. It's holding up really great, which is what I designed it for. It's doing its job and I have this nice blue auto towel. Somebody made a comment after my last video and I said I found it in an auto store and that's what it is. You find it in an auto store. They're very absorbent. I like them because it really shows you guys how much I'm releasing product and how much product I'm using and so on. Okay, so this is the first step. In my last video, I did the reverse French where you do the pink first. But in this particular design, which is the ombre, you do the white or blue or black, whatever color you're using as the tip color that's fading into the rest. You use that color first. And in this color, we're going to use the white. Now, in this case, I am using my slow setting, no smelling monomer and powder. I'm gonna rest it into the white. It's a soft white. It is not a blue white. It's more natural white. So it's not a stark, stark blue white. I'm gonna place it right there. Bit of a dryer bead. And this product sort of keeps setting as it's going on. The monomer is soaking into the powder even more. We do want the white a little bit drier and stiffer than the rest just easier for the white to move around. It's still sort of setting on there. And we're just going to start forming it and putting it into place. Now I am making sure that this join here is very thin and very low because I do want the height in this area here to be the pink. I don't want it to be the white. The white and the other fingers, you can look at this index finger, you can see the white is more focused on here. The thickness in here is that pink. Okay, so I'm just sort of getting a vague shape of what I want, making it that long pointy almond, which is my real go-to favorite shape. I love it. Now you can see it's very flush to the existing nail. I don't know if you can really see. I'll turn it sideways a little bit. Cameraman, can you see that? The upper camera, so you can see yeah. how it's not, there's the natural nail, and it's sitting right at the same level. It's not higher than. That's important. That'll be a success when you start to file. That'll be very important. One thing that's really harder to show on camera is the depth and the thickness of nails. We can see the length, we can see the design, we can see everything going on this way more or less, but it's really hard to really show the depth and thickness of it. And also too, because the camera's focusing in to try to make it, try to see it, but sometimes it can look really thick and it's not. Okay. So I'm gonna check this other side here. It's harder to see sometimes when you're doing your own nails. I'm gonna get the tiniest little bit of the white. Now this is sometimes where I can, whoopsie, make a mistake, which is maybe putting too much in there, but well, that is a lot. I'm gonna get a lot less. Just the tiniest, it's like even just like the very end of the tip of a piece of rice, even smaller than that. <laughs> Almost like how much bigger than a size of glitter. I'm just gonna fill it in there just in case when I bring the pink over top of it. So sometimes I don't like that line across there, so I might take a little bit more. And this is a little bit harder to do. But I'm going to put a little bit of white in there, and I'm just going to do a very, very, very gentle fade, you might say, with the white, just to soften that line a little so you don't see it strongly through when I put the foundation pink on. And I'm going to do a tiny, the same movement on this side right here. So I just have a slight, slightly kind of an awkward move with me brush. 
but just a slight fading. Now I'm going to do my foundation pink and I'm going to do over top of the whole nail. It does look better that way. I've done it where I've done a lighter pink near the cuticle and then the foundation or the darker color or cover, whatever you want to call it, in here. And it just doesn't look as good. I find it does look better if you do it solid right across the top. So I'm going to get a nice bead. I'm going to hold it in my monomer. Very little monomer, you guys. You don't need a lot. Oh, someone sent me a message and asked me, um, Susie, she said, she dipping into the monomer and then when she dips into the powder, she's ending up with a lot of beads in the side of her dish. That is because there's so much monomer in her brush that it's, she's holding, holding, and holding. And then when she goes to bring it out, it's so heavy, it just drops. So what's happening there is just too much monomer. And that, you know, this is part of the learning curve. We've all ruined these things, especially when you're learning, right? That's totally a part of it. If you're using a really big brush too, Big brushes hold on to a lot of monomer, and you may not see it when you're soaking it in there, then you think you're doing the right amount. By the time you get in there, it's all falling down through the bristles and gathering a big bead on the bottom and the powder just can't hold it. So use less monomer. That's a great question. So you just want a little bit of monomer, especially with this stuff, you need very, very little monomer. And you wanna hold it into your jar, just hold it right into the same spot. Let that bead absorb into those bristles. And then when you pull it out, you got hopefully a size of bead like that. And then you can take it and put it onto the nail and you release. And you can see it starting to move just a tiny little bit. And it'll move and soften and fall a little bit. Just an ever so slight. And that's when you can come in. And that's the beauty of the slow setting. You got time to try to create and learn your craft. And you remember, you guys, if you are training to be a nail technician, you're doing this a lot. You're doing, if you, once you get into it, if you start doing clients and stuff, you're learning every time you do it. And you have that advantage. You're doing many, many people. But if you're just doing yourself, you're going to do your own nails maybe once every two weeks, maybe. So you're not getting near as much practice. So it's a bit of a longer learning curve for you. And if you're lucky that you can have another family member that you can uh, practice on that would really help your learning curve but I really recommend when you are first learning you don't want to make those really misshapen blobs all over top, top of people's nails because it's really tough on you because you have to take it all off and that is a whole other you know time consuming situation and not comfortable for the client too so it's really great to just learn on a fake hand or um, with the paper first you know things like that as you keep going See how that sort of fell into place? I was just sort of feathering it out, just moving it a little bit to my advantage to soften it. So I'm gonna grab another little bead, a little bit of a wetter bead, and we're talking marginal, it's all in the details, you guys. Just marginally wetter, so just a little bit wetter. So that might mean that you hold it in the um, powder for maybe three or four seconds, as opposed to five or six. That's the difference in how much wetter. And you wanna put this one near closer to the cuticle and see how I release and see how it's moving ever so slightly. See that? And now I'm gonna go in and just sort of coax it a little bit closer. And I'm dabbing off onto my paper towel constantly, just getting rid of excess liquid. Much easier to maneuver and move a bead around when your brush is drier. If your brush is wet, the product can often stick to it and be all sticky and drive you nuts. See how beautiful that looks? I wanna tell you too, if you're doing your own hands all the time, just leave a thin layer of a clear layer, pink, whatever you want. Leave that thin layer so you can file down to that thin layer. So you can use your hands all the time. You just wanna file down to that thin layer. Okay, beautiful. I'm very, very happy with that, but I'm looking at this side. I don't like that. That's icky. So I'm going to take another tiny little bead, foundation pink. So the foundation pink is actually where I'm creating the ombre. The ombre isn't as much in the white as it is your top pink. See that? I'm going to let them sit there. I'm letting them sort of just moving ever so slight. He's really kind of finding the place where I want him to be anyway. 
and I'm going to just coax them right in there and now I'm just feathering it out. I don't even have to feather it out so much on this side especially, but I'm always perfecting my sculpting no matter what. The better you get at sculpting, the easier it is at filing and the less filing you have to do actually. Beauty, be happy with that. It's always very satisfying because this is a rather hard design to master. Once you have completed that between the pink and the white, there's just two colors that went down, I clear cap it. And the reason why I do that is to protect the design that I've created. Because if I went to start filing that right now, I might file off some of that foundation pink where I placed it so strategically. I've just put like a hairline sometimes, a very feather light touch. So the drill could just remove that right away. So I clear cap it to encase and sort of, you know, like a glass over top of a picture. I'm just protecting the design that's under there. So I just want very little amount, very little amount. And when I say clear cap, it doesn't have to be from the cuticle to the very tip of the finger. It just has to be in that arch where the foundation pink is faded is the only place I really need to put it. See how I'm just letting it rest for a second? It's just resting, 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 and it's falling right over that stress area. This is also a point in time where you can strengthen that stress area. Notice how I'm not going down to the cuticle. I don't need it down there. Cuticle is the place where you have the thinnest application. So all I'm doing is just feathering it out and I'm just gonna gently, the lightest, lightest touch, and I'm pulling the clear capping all the way down to the very end pulling it right over top of the white. Beauty. Yeah, that's good, I'm happy with that. So again, this is a soft white. This is not a competition where they tend to lean on the blue white side. This is a soft white, more of a natural white. And I love it, it goes beautiful with the ombre. Not that you can't do a ombre with a blue white. I just prefer the look a little bit more as a softer, more natural look. So now I just let that cure. I'm gonna put my brush away now, so we're gonna start filing. But how I clean that is the leftover monomer that's in there, I just condition my brush in there. As long as there's no product in there, I can just take the leftover monomer and just gently roll it to a point and leave the monomer in there and just cap it. And this brush will last you years, you guys. I keep hitting this and I wanna show you, this time I put this here. The last video I was wearing this as well. It is my favorite new gel that I'm using. I absolutely love the Nude Collection. It's a Joy Mia product, but this is the color I'm having to wear. It's at 39. I just wanted to share that with you because a lot of people do ask me what's on my other hand. Okay, and then you don't, if you have any liquid left over, don't pour it in there. Just soak it up with a paper towel and throw it in the trash. Don't put it down the drain, okay? Okay, so now there's a trick to this. This is very slow setting and that's what it's doing for us right now. It's just setting up. What we're gonna do is there's two options you can do. You can run it under warm water and it will set the surface layer and then you can start filing or wait till it's cured and you can roll off the top layer. It's like a gel layer. It's got a slight dispersion layer. Hence, when things set slower, that's sometimes what they do. They have a dispersion layer. Once you remove it, you're good to go. Okay, so I ran this under hot water. I like doing that. I think it's just, I just don't like the gummy layer, just like I don't like it in gel and stuff. So I just run it under warm water and it sets it really fast. I like it. Okay, I, when I take a form off, I always pull it down. Okay, so now I will use the course file. Ooh, these are a brand new set. So when I use the course file, I love it because I'm sculpting and shaping and the course one is perfect for that gel or acrylic. Now, if you have an e-file, you can try to do some filing with your e-file, but uh, I'm gonna do this with a hand file. It's only one finger. And like I say, the better I get at sculpting, the easier the filing is. I do wanna mention, don't be hard on yourself on this design. I've been doing this for years, and this design I had to work at to get better at. And the softer the color is, the easier it is to do sometimes. The stronger the color, like if this was a black or a deep red, they are hard to fade. So just keep that in mind. They're much harder to do when it's strong, strong color like that. The whites can be hard too. 
But there's a learning curve to this. So just remember, guys, that, you know, anything worth doing takes some effort to do. And you got to put the time in to do it. But it's so much fun. So when I'm filing, I, am, I just sort of attack the shape first is what I mostly do. Sort of get my bearings is where it's all going to be. And I'm going for that sort of long almondy pointy thing. Seems to be my favorite right now. I'm looking at it from all angles. It's looking pretty good. Making sure it's not too high. I got lots of filing videos, so you guys can check those out. I think cameraman's gonna put, you know, a card somewhere. You can do that, cameraman. Yeah, I'll put a card up and a link in the description. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Looking good. Okay, and then I finish with this file. Nice and fresh one. So I'm gonna grab this file, and I must thank you guys. They're selling great my products. I have to thank you for supporting me and believing in me so much. Thank you so much. I'm just gonna buff up. This is called my sanding sponge, and I'm just gonna give it a nice buff. This is a nice finishing file for putting your color coats, gel coats, top coats. Okay, you've seen me polish a thousand times. So I'm gonna polish these up with a nice clear top coat. Check out the reveal shots. Well, that's what we're doing now. We're doing it at home. Just like I colored my own hair. <laughs> I cut my own hair. Did you notice, cameraman? I cut my hair? I did notice. <laughs> we're doing it ourselves, you guys. Oh, and if anybody's still looking for hand sanitizer, you can get some at Joya Mia. This stuff smells wonderful. It's got alcohol and cucumber fragrance, so it smells really good. Anyway, thank you for joining me, you guys. Stay safe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Ooh.